Hey, there's a prayer card. It actually has two different prayers on it. And the one that we're going to start off with is a prayer for new life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear God, please help me to become a person of integrity who delights in you. Do for me what I cannot do for myself. I surrender my life to you, for I know you will make it right. What I have made wrong, in you I trust. Teach me to do your will, in you I have faith. Show me the path to walk. You are the giver of life. May your spirit cleanse my heart and mind forever. Will I give you thanks? Amen. Thank you. The topic today is Jesus, the Word made flesh. And we hear that in the Gospel of John. But I wanted to try to do some reflections today to go a little deeper on what does that mean for us on a personal level? Can you guys hear me in the back there? Okay. I'm probably going to wander around then. <laughs> okay. One of the things that I've learned over time that's very, very important is we all have special gifts that we have to offer to one another and to the body of Christ. One of the things that I have discovered in my work as a therapist in that too, is that oftentimes people will stay away from a situation or a conflict or if someone passes, they kind of hesitate going to a wake or if somebody's in the hospital, somebody may kind of hesitate. You know, we ask ourselves questions like, what am I gonna say? Or what if I say the wrong thing? Or you know, what do I have to really bring to this. The most valuable thing that you have is your presence. Your physical presence with somebody is a stronger message than anything you could say or anything that you could bring. When we think about presence, I'd like you to think about when the word becomes flesh. God sends his presence among us. The most powerful gift that God could give us. I've been uh, blessed with the opportunity to uh, accompany the team here at Our Lady of the Rosary to go into the Land of Lakes Jail. And I can tell you there's a lot of guys that are there, and women, that don't have any contact with family, friends. It's kind of like people have disappeared from their life. And they feel it. They feel very much alone and abandoned and all of that. And of course, we can look at, well, you know, the reason they got there, this, that, and the other. But when we go in there, we bring our presence from Our Lady of the Rosary to pray with them but we also bring the body of Christ. We bring the Eucharist to them. And I often tell them that we bring you the most precious thing that we can bring you, and that's the presence of God. It makes all the difference in the world. When we talk about the Word becomes flesh, we can sometimes get kind of complicated in uh, theory and talking about uh, the Gospel of John and that, but I'd rather focus on looking at how do I, on a personal level, in my work and with my family, how do I bring the real presence of Christ into my life? And those are the kind of elements I want to kind to focus on today and to look at, because I believe that we have such a powerful gift to give to one another. Courage comes from the French word heart. To encourage is to give somebody heart, to build them up. To discourage is to kind of rip their heart out. We often discourage one another a lot. 
We hold back on giving those positive words to lift somebody up. It is the little things that make the difference. We hold back even our, on our acceptance of encouragement from others. We ask ourselves, what do they really want? Why are they telling me this? We become suspicious. We don't accept the encouragement we receive. And it's one of the most powerful gifts that we have to give somebody. It can make your day. It can turn it around. I had a situation once where I had a patient who was schizophrenic and he was completely detached from his experience because he had lost his mother. He was living in the home with her in a trailer in Pinellas and she had died and he was still trying to take care of her after she was dead. So he was there with her for a few weeks before it was discovered what was going on. And by the time he got to us, he was catatonic, which means he had no affect, nothing. He was kind of like frozen, nothing. Came to our treatment program and we kept encouraging him. And we kept trying to give him words of hope, try to bring him out, and the staff that I was working with was very, they were ready to give up. This guy, he needs to go to state hospital, we need to send him off. The psychiatrist he had was very, very patient. And he encouraged us, be patient, the medications are going to work, continue to encourage him. And we look at each other and go, okay, we will, we'll try. So we did. The day comes where he comes to group and we can't get him to stop talking. He suddenly had, and it's very rare, an awakening type of experience where the medication and the encouragement kind of came together and he suddenly came out of this being frozen in time and space. The miracle wasn't that he came out of this. The miracle was he knew us all by name. And we were floored because we didn't think we were getting through. We were giving up hope on this person. We were going to not encourage him anymore. He remembered us all by name. He had heard us when we didn't believe we were getting through. There are often times in life where we feel discouraged. Am I making a difference? And sometimes we don't see that difference until further down the road. I had a blessing in working with a Jewish agency with victims of Holocaust. They were children when they were in the camps. It was amazing to see the resilience of the human spirit, the compassion of people who had been treated so poorly, that did not lose hope, that did not lose compassion. And they, in their lives, spoke such a strong message of resiliency, hope, change, redemption. The Word was made flesh. God comes to us in physical presence to be among us, to walk the walk, to show us the path. He lives it out. In our time, we talk a lot about talking the talk and walking the walk. A lot of times, we can speak the words of truth, the gospel, the good news. The difficulty is living it out on a day-to-day -day basis. It's in the little things. And so today I'd like to reflect a little bit on some uh, ideas that can help us to do that, to live out the Word made flesh. We hear a lot about the difference between knowledge and wisdom. In our day and age, we have access to a lot of information. 
You just got to Google it. it. Comes right up. Whether or not it's valid or not, that's another story. That's Wikipedia. But um, the difference between knowledge is having access to a lot of information. Wisdom is the application of what you, the knowledge you've gathered. <coughs> we all know people that are very book smart, but they can't apply it in the real world. They're lost. It is through our life experiences that we learn wisdom. And it takes patience sometimes to allow that to happen. Sometimes we fail more than we succeed. But wisdom is something that each and every one of us share. We have a different perspective, one from another. And that is why the body of Christ is so powerful. We have multitude of gifts and talents, but we also have a lot of different aspects of wisdom. Knowing about Jesus, salvation history, and the church is very good and useful knowledge. But if I don't have a personal and communal relationship with Christ, it's not going to be a breathing, living faith. How do I make it personal? How do I make it communal? How do I take the head knowledge and apply it to my life to live it out? It is a wondrous thing that we have in our church, the sacraments of initiation. And I've been blessed uh, with uh, accompanying Father Ron on the baptisms where we have a whole bunch of little ones coming in. And we are bringing them into a supportive community to say that we are going to be there for them in their walk of life. So I can tell you in society, there's a lot of elements that are not going to be there, that are going to be a negative influence. They're going to try to tear them down, which makes it even more important that we be the living presence of Christ in the world today. When we talk about incarnation, we're talking about God becoming man, but we're also talking about Jesus being in our flesh and living out his presence in our daily life. That's what personal relationship is all about. Being married for a few years, I've learned <laughs> communication skills are very important. <laughs> Sometimes it's real important to listen and not just to be uh, speaking. The same is true with our prayer life. A lot of times we will spend hours talking to God, but we're not listening. We have two ears and one mouth. We're supposed to listen twice as much. The contemplative uh, monks and uh, the contemplative fathers have taught us that if we quiet ourselves from all the distractions, we'll hear the answer to the prayers that we've been voicing. It's kind of like having a best friend, but you never allow them or give them a chance to talk. And you're speaking all the time they're not going to hang out a whole lot there. They're, you need to have that dialogue. And I think it's real important to be aware of that God always answers our prayers. <coughs> may not be the answer we want or expect, but He always answers. And normally, I, I firmly believe in my personal relationship with Christ that God has a sense of humor <laughs> because He will send you the person you most <laughs> would never think that is going to come to you to bring you the word and the presence of God. You've got to be open to it. Uh, he surprises us in very many ways. Very many ways. The thing that stands in the way of our receiving some of that is oftentimes our sense of pride, 
our sense of holding on 